Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? Speaker. I'm trying to make sure everything is uh, connected. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you guys can hear me. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Can anyone hear me? Make sure you, if you can uh, hear me, type it in the chat. Hey, hey. How you doing, DF? Am I audible? Can you guys hear me? This is like my fourth live stream, third, fourth, so I'm still kind of uh, still new to it. I haven't. Um... Sounds good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. So yeah, I started a little early. Uh, you know, five minutes early. Uh, so just wanted to make sure everything is all in, all in, uh, doing well. But yeah, so. Good, good. No, uh, it's good to hear DPW. Um, you know, I, I uh, earlier today in our uh, um, private Discord channel, mic check is good. Good, good to hear. Perfect. Or earlier today uh, on our private Discord channel, uh, one of our um, members, uh, you know, actually a couple of them uh, of us, we were talking about uh, Kathy Wood and. Um, yeah, so she she hasn't had a really great year, you know. I I posted on my Twitter page, um, I posted a nice joke, how Ark Invest is a different type of Ark. You know, usually we, we we would want the Ark going like this, right, going up. You know, her Ark is going down, right? So, uh, so her, you know, ha ha ha, right? So she, you know, she she's not she's not doing too well, and um, and I'm I'm all for uh, dollar cost averaging. Uh, thank you, Pat. I appreciate that. Uh, good, good. So I'm all about dollar cost averaging, but you know, she recently sold out of her Palantir shares. So that, that was kind of weird. Um, Pal I mean, in terms of innovation, I would think Palantir is a little, is more innovative than Roku. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, you kind of see a, a contraction of, uh, the economy right now and it's and and uh, you know there's a lot of people playing the safety route and including including her so i don't necessarily agree with her uh but we have to acknowledge her and she just released a video that i thought was really helpful so i was thinking we could go over it and you guys can just say you know pause or something and we can just kind of talk about it i'll give you my input on what i think regarding the video here so yeah so that's what's going on right now uh with with what this live stream is all about. We just want to go over a couple of things. I went over the video like 10, 15 minutes to see if it was a good fit for us. And it looks like it was. And um, there were a couple of errors that I saw within her thesis. In fact, there was some calculation errors. Uh, so I I'm going to point that out. Usually when, when you know, you're holding billions of dollars in people's money, you know, I expect you to be accurate by um you know a point uh two five percent error uh but she was off by more than five percent uh in terms of her money uh m2 velocity of money equation which i have the data pulled up i will show you guys what i'm talking about but there's been a couple of errors that i've seen um and maybe you guys can correct me maybe i'm wrong 
Uh, but I've looked at the data and yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what she said. And there are some things I agree with and there's some things that I don't. And that's just how investing works. Uh, she's obviously under pressure. Everyone's watching her now. That's exa exactly Bud123. Here, let, let me uh, show, I gotta show the comment here. So some, sometimes people can't see it if they're not um, logged on. Yeah, so she, you know, for people that don't know, she bought Palantir at a very high price. And then she bought it down when it was like $21 and then went back up to 26 And then she sold a little to rebalance her ETF, you know, portfolio, right? And then she bought again at 21 Then she bought heavy again at 18 17 And she was just buying at high. And all of a sudden, you know, she bought high and then she just sold low. And it's it's kind of weird, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, you know, and her explanation of this is that she never gave one, but her general thesis of how she approaches her investment strategies is she tends to buy high. Uh, uh, and if the stock does fail and she does lose his conviction, you know, she loses conviction, she goes and sells out of it and goes into something that's more conviction. So, you know, such as zoom and Roku. Um, so that's kind of weird. Cause I, in terms of innovation, I think Palantir is, uh, is really good. So, so, th so th there's a couple things that, that I, I, uh, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so there's a couple things that I wanted to discuss here. This is kind of a quick, uh, live stream, just kind of just out of the whim. I wanted to just record one talking about just kind of what's going on with Kathy. Uh, I think she messed up and I, I this was a terrible move. In my opinion, this is, you know, uh, she, she literally bought high and sold low and she sold a company and her excuse was they're they're dropping on government contracting so their government so if you anal I analyze them all that all, you know all the jazz when it came to the um, earnings report and it's funny because she said that the government you know activity in terms of getting government contracts so for people that don't know what Palantir is Palantir is a um, you could call it an artificial intelligence meets uh, kind of the general, um, I guess, let me start over in, in Palantir, there are essentially two different phases of Palantir. You have the foundry platform, which is the commercial sector. And then you have the Gotham platform, which is used for military operations. It was, uh, essentially created by Alex Karp and Peter Thiel. In fact, if you read Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One, a great book that everyone should read if you want to become a better investor. Um, that's all, that's my that's my top 10 books, right? Uh, Peter Thiel said that his first best investment was Facebook. He was the first investor of Facebook. By the way, Peter Thiel also created PayPal with Elon Musk. His second best investment, he said, was Palantir. And this is hidden in a book from 2014. This book was written in 24. I read this book. Like I, I knew about Palantir way before everyone started talking about, about this. So how much of it, of, of it is her? Uh, can you clarify your question? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not like, are you saying like how much of her success is her success? I, I think personally, uh, you know, she's been very successful. I mean, she called, she called, um, you know, Tesla when no one was calling it. In fact, you know, let me just give you guys, let me give you guys some, let, let me give you guys some, uh, free cash flow analysis really quickly. Right. I think that would be helpful for people. Um, I'm definitely part of the Clove Crew. Hell yeah. No, no, for sure. Yeah, Kathy has been buying into it. Peter Till backed. I've been in it in a few months. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up here so people can look at it. And also I can look at it also. Um so Peter Thiel, for people that don't know, this man is a genius, but he's also controversial because he also he's he's a very proud supporter of Donald Trump. 
In fact, he just stepped down as as a Facebook board uh, to actually go into politics. In fact, there is a senator whom uh, you know. Shout out to you, Blake, who uh, who's out, who's who's a, who's backed by or not backed. I, I shouldn't say this, but he has a support of Peter Thiel, and he's actually running running for senator of Arizona, my home state. And uh, um, I'm a proud supporter of Bla you know Blake Masters. In fact, he was the co-creator of the book Zero to One back in. Uh, 2014. So if people that read the book, you know, Palantir about Palantir, you guys already know about Palantir, right? So I recommend looking at Peter Thiel. So the whole criticism that Kathy Wood had in the beginning, when Palantir uh, essentially underwent its $10 kind of a IPO day, essentially, she said that she wants more heavy focus on the commercialization of uh, Palantir's foundry program and not be too uh, dependent on the Gotham military CIA, um, you know, uh, platform, right? And it's happened. Now Palantir's commercial sector is growing faster than, let's say, the government sector. In fact, the government sector is falling. And her criticism was, "Hey, you know, the government sector is falling." And so I don't know what's going on here because this is exactly what she wanted. Um, so just to give some examples for people, because I know I put Palantir in the title, some Palantir folks might be watching this video. Palantir is essentially going to be changing their whole conundrum now. They're going to be hiring an extensive sales team that they never had, and they outputted these results, which exemplifies the product itself. They're also going to start reporting in terms of how Wall Street likes to report. This is why Clover Health hasn't really been in a really good position, because the CFO is not favored by Wall Street. Let's put it how it is. I mean, Wall Street doesn't like the CFO in terms of like, they want a CFO that they know. They want a CFO that has experience on how to report in Wall Street. So that's kind of what I'm getting from my 10 years of experience. Uh, so Palantir is on that track to reporting in a, in a way that allows Wall Street to get some comfort to back them. And also Clover Health, and again, they're taking their time because a CFO is extremely important. Uh, so they, they need to find one with with wall you know with with Wall Street experience right so uh, let me go ahead and uh, read the comments here so yeah Brad uh, you know her success is phenomenal and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by that uh, so you guys can learn some cool things you know uh, so she has been. So she, so she's been, so she's been uh, dollar cost averaging. I, I, I need to look at the most recent because she just sold out completely. She completely sold out. Yeah, and and that's what I recommend for people. Um, again, not financial advice, but if you know, I like Arc's investment strategy. That's what I employ, but I employ it in a more, um, out, you know algorithmic i mean the people that are on this live are part of our al stock alerts which is down in the patreon they know i'm a complete nerd i'm data orientated the whole discord channel that we have is 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 they have twenty two thousand dollars of machine-like robots running the whole show and it's you know they're getting what hedge funds have so i combine kathy wood's investment thesis with warren buffett's uh, um, investment strategies and you know if you like arc invest stocks just pick cherry pick the stocks that you guys like and just invest in those you don't have to invest in arc invest you just go into arc invest look at their holdings and see which one you like they've done the research and see what what stocks you know j you know rhyme with you right so that's another strategy people use so i want to just you know, and I'll provide the link so you guys can see where, the, where I'm talking about. But I wanted to take, and again, this was going to be a reaction video 
to to um to Kathy here, but I, I wanted to just show you something real quick here, okay? Let me open up let me open up the screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put Tesla, okay? So once we look at Tesla, now again these numbers may look a little, you know, too much, but um let me get some coffee in me here. Uh, so I've been studying the whole day, so I'm kind of brain dead. So just forgive me for my lack of energy right now. But I'm very, uh, you know, energized. But it's just kind of when you do a lot of questions, you're kind of brain dead, you know. All right. So uh, here's the Tesla here, and here's revenue. And I want you to guys focus on net income, and I want you to focus on free cash flow. Okay, guys. I want you to show. I want to show you how blind Wall Street is. Okay. So I want you to take a look at free cash flow. If someone in the chat, can someone tell me when the free cash flow became positive? Can someone tell me that, please? When did the free cash flow, what year did the free cash flow become positive? Right? And again, I, I hate to make this like a classroom, but they became positive in 2019. Okay. The free cash flow for Tesla became positive in 2019. Okay, that's I want you to remember that day. I want I want you to just remember that year in your mind just for a sec here, okay? I want you to take a look at net income, okay? At what year did net income become positive? And this you know, we're going to be talking right now, we're going to be talking about all this and analyzing this in our mastering stock market course and trying to ascertain how to you know again with our intrinsic value calculator so you're not just pumping up numbers typing numbers blindly you guys understand what this means what year did tesla become exactly they became positive in 2020 okay so i want you to remember they became free cash flow positive in 2019 and they become net income profitable positive in 2020. so now let's go back in time and let's pretend we're in 2017 and let's look at the price action in 2017. Again, in 2018, they became free cash flow positive right here. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, so sorry. 2019, they became free cash flow positive. 2019. So now let's go to 2017. And I want us to just kind of briefly just go, let's do five years and let's go to 2017. So here we are. Oh, you can't see me. Let me. There it is. Is that better? Okay. So now let's let's chuggle. Let's chug along. We're in 2017. We're holding the stock. It's not moving. It's boring. All a lot of other stocks are going up. Apple, whatever. You know, everyone else is making money. Why aren't we making money, right? Something happened in 2019. Right here. Something happened in 2019. Right here. And look, and look, it became free cash flow positive, and it went from 70, excuse me, I was about to cuss right now, $70 to $37, guys. It became free cash flow positive, and it went to 70 to, it lost half of its almost value, literally, right? Yeah, half. But that was a trigger for all fun. All investors that are smart. That was once I saw that, I said it's time. It's time. Because by 2020, just look at the numbers. Negative, 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 positive. 2020. And then all of a sudden, positive, right? And then look what happened after that. The growth started to catch up. The growth started to catch up like crazy. Okay? So I give you this exercise to show you how Wall Street can be late to this because they're catching up all the other ones that have shifted. And Clover Health just reported that they said that they're going to become free cash flow, not profitable 
by 2023. Okay, and we already, you know, for people that are just the first time investing in the stock, you know, they might say, ah, how can a two, three dollar stock go to eighty dollars or a hundred? Well, we just saw one of them go up to Indu, I N D O. I called it out in my private uh, Discord channel and our top short squeeze plays at four dollars and thirty six cents. You have twenty x your money, okay? Exactly, and 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 Frank, let let me up your comment here. And Frank, let me tell you something, okay? I have three first names, okay? And my middle name is Frank, okay? So <laughs> I kid you not, okay? So <laughs> but let me tell you, I, well, that wasn't that, right? Uh, there are so many other examples of this, what I showed you, that happened. It's not just Tesla. It's just I use Tesla because everyone knows Tesla, you know what I mean, right? So... And that's the beautiful part about the stock market. If you know this, and this is why I'm, this is why we're going to be teaching this on our platform, and in our in our Al Stock Alerts. This is this is the basis of what we do. We find stocks that are we know that we like. There's a high certain degree that this is going to be profitable, and we invest. Right. So, so AMD, I, I I believe so. I need to take a look, but you know, let's uh, just uh, quickly, uh, you know, let's uh, go ahead and do this. So yeah, free cash flow here, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, and then a big positive, and that's when you know that's when the whole Intel to AMD shift happened, right? And then net income here, and then look at that, boom, right? And then you, you are, are, are you seeing the pattern, right? There's a pattern to this. Exactly, exactly. So, so I, I share you this because, you know, most people don't, I don't know why they don't teach this. I don't, I Maybe because they don't want to show the actual basis of Wall Street. Well, this is it. But but there's one question you guys haven't asked. When do we sell? Okay, we know it's going to go up. And that's where the intrinsic value calculation plays in. That's where my calculator plays in, right? That's when you, you know you do your, you know, you do your duty. That's when it tells you when to sell and all, right? So you got, you, know, you got to look at the value of it, right? So, so there's that. Um, so now let's just go over... Kathy Wood, and let's uh, talk about her. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to remove me here. Let's go back here. Un momento here. Share screen. Okay, so I'll do this so you guys can, or how do you guys like it? This is good, right? This is good. Okay, there you go. I can make it full screen. They're beautiful. All right, so, okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to play this video for you. And I am going to increase it to 1.5 speed. If it's too fast, drop it in the chat. Say, slow it down, speed it up. Let me know, okay? All right. And please let me know if, you're, if, you, if you hear anything. If you don't hear anything, just, you know, yell, yell at me, okay? Greetings, everyone. Um, I know it's a sad time. Uh, the events in Ukraine are heartbreaking, excruciatingly heartbreaking. And um, we're going to do our, our small part at ARC. Uh, uh, please look this weekend for a special um, T-shirt uh, uh, among our swag uh, for, for Ukraine. All the profits uh, that we make do go to charity to begin with. But in this case, we will be sending all of the profits to, to Ukraine. Uh, so please join us in um, doing your part to help them as well. Um, on this, uh, on this Speaking of that, I'm also going to be making some merch uh, for Ukraine. So I'm going to be making uh, more Clover Health cups, but they're going to be specific Ukraine cups where 
all the profits from that cup go to Ukraine as well. Uh, so we're going to be doing that as well. On this webcast, I normally go through fiscal policy, monetary policy, economic indicators, uh, market indicators, and then um, some uh, new and interesting tidbits about innovation. And we'll do all that. But first, uh, I'd like to uh, focus on you know this environment. Uh, it, as you will recall, I started doing these uh, this webcast when um, when COVID hit, and I was on every week as uh, uh, as the economic indicators were coming out. And um, we were we had taken a point of view that at the time COVID was a shock to the system, much like uh, the stock market crash in '87. It was a one day twenty five percent crash. Uh, I I uh, uh, if you could turn Kathy a little louder um, let me see here okay uh, so I'm using a platform that Let me double check here. I'm I'm using a platform that may not be able to do that. Um, yeah. Not to worry. Uh, we just purchased a Mac Studio, the one that just came out yesterday. Uh, we're we will be upping our investments within our studio, and we will be. Uh, So the volume is at its highest. Um, I, I just increased it all the way up. It was already high. So we we uh, we will. Uh, but but I will be getting a stream uh, a specific str stream deck, and we will pr I will perfect this. I also want to uh, say thank you so much to Scruff here. I appreciate that. Um, uh, yes. I, there's a twenty-two thousand dollars yearly of membership there. We're going to be putting an extra twenty grand. Y yeah, I don't, I don't f around. This is undervalued, and I want to be able to democratize financial uh, information for all. Absolutely. So, Crash, let's go back uh, here. And then nine eleven, um, the terrorist attack. And uh, our point then was, uh, after a shock, the trends that were in motion tend to come back into motion. So in, in the 80s, the strong stock market and the, um, and the strong economy continued after the, after the shock, after we got over the shock. And uh, in 9-11, 2001, uh, we were in recession before. That was the tech and telecom bust. And uh, the shock made everything a little bit worse, a little rebound, and then back into that recession. Uh, and as you know, that was a right call for, for COVID. Uh, we went into a V-shaped recovery thanks to tremendous stimulus. And um, thanks to the fact that it was a shock uh, that um, uh, was not going to be completely debilitating given, given the united uh, stimulus around the world. Um, for the past year, I feel uh, like we've been uh, going through uh, a little bit of a, a different kind of shock, and it's associated with inflation and interest rate fears. Now, during shocks, and, and we saw this during COVID, uh, what we tend to see in the public equity markets is what I call algorithms or, or quantitative trading strategies that just pick up on a few variables and um, and uh, uh, press hard uh, from uh, in terms of betting against uh, them, the, the stocks associated with them. Uh, so during COVID, uh, we could see very clearly that uh, cash cushions and cash burn uh, were the two primary variables that these algorithms seem to be seizing on. And th they uh, hurt our stocks disproportionately. Uh, in the span of three to four weeks, our stocks, many of them were down 75%. Because many of our companies are earlier stage, we're the closest you'll find to a venture capital uh, fund in the public equity markets. Uh, and of course, at that time, we said, you know, innovation solves problems, and we have a lot of problems now. And uh, of course, our strategies took off uh, once the coast was clear for the markets. Well, in the last year, this fear of inflation and interest rates moving up and destroying uh, the valuations in the marketplace have, have gripped the markets. And, uh, and it seems as though the algorithms were focused primarily on high valuation stocks. Uh, now, our in our strategies, we own uh, what look like very high valuation stocks in, um, in the short term, if you're only looking at this year. And I do realize that investment time horizons shrink during times of turmoil. Um, uh, but if you take a look at our multi the multiples on our stocks, uh, it, given a five-year investment time horizon, you will find that they are at or below very mature innovation stocks. In other words, we've made that assumption. The valuations are going to compress dramatically uh, and uh, to, to the 18, 19 times range when it comes to enterprise value to EBITDA. 
so we've already made the assumption that the valuations are, are going to come down. We believe uh, what's happening in Russia and the Ukraine right now is turbocharging the shock to high valuation stocks that began last February when we were all uh, getting vaccinated and hopes were that the economy would continue to gain uh, momentum. And, uh, and so we now believe that Russia and Ukraine have turbocharged that shock and, and actually hopefully moved it in into a period that is very cathartic and helps people understand that what's going on right now, from our point of view at least, is that uh, the higher interest rates and higher inflation uh, are, are acting like taxes on the system. And we've been talking for a while about this, about uh, consumption slowing down dramatically. If you look at retail sales, and I'm talking about real retail sales, take out the inflation and uh, real consumption. Uh, we've seen a dramatic uh, slowdown since, uh, since October. And we are beginning to see inventories pile up. Uh, all of that uh, is, is working out the way we expected it to. Our surprise is that uh, many economists and strategists out there aren't putting two and two together. They're paying attention to other variables, which uh, there are. So I wanted to comment about this. So she said uh, some important things here in regarding to, you know, turbo shock the economy. And also the second thing is inventories. Okay. So I have been tracking inventories for quite some time. And it's true. Nordstrom's inventories have been increasing. Uh, there have been a couple of uh, um, uh, inventories in terms of cars that uh, have uh, been increasing as well. Um, there are essentially what's happening is once you have an increase in inventory there are risks of slight recessions when uh your essentially business over performed the production of measurement where your consumers are not actually buying it right an example of this is peloton look exact look look what happened to peloton right um, so I'm going to uh, explain to you uh, why this could be happening, and I'm going to be referencing uh, this um, really quickly here. Let me share screen again. Okay, so as you can see, this is the FRED economic data. This is uh, data you can access to essentially understand how money supply works and a lot of other things uh, employ, you know, there's a lot of research here. Okay. There, are, there are a couple different types of, uh, a velocity of money trackers. This is discontinued down here. There's M1 and M2. M1 is a little bit, uh, more specific m2 is what a lot of economists use i use m2 and what that is is it includes savings accounts okay so for people that don't understand the velocity of money it's essentially tracking uh how uh money is spent and how fast it cycles through the economy before it gets tucked away right so for example if you purchase our patreon the money that I get, I go ahead and I pay our data centers that supply us the information such as the dark pool data, the options, all the all the resources that I use goes directly to uh, a Wall Street uh, data center that I am partners with. And we get the data. Now, again, they take that money and they're going to go ahead and pay their engineers, pay their cloud computing system to get more storage in order to, right? So essentially this dollar cycles, let's say three to four times before it gets saved away. But that dollar was able to generate that much work, right? However, if you were to analyze the velocity of money, look what happened, guys. The velocity of money, and this is again, this is from 1960 all the way up to 2020. So look what happened when the pandemic, the velocity of money has just fallen down and it's still edging down. However, if let's zoom out really quickly, if we were to look at the uh, timestamp here to a year, you can start to see there's an inflection point we have and it could start to go up again. The problem is when you have a decrease within the velocity of money, economic activity starts to constrict. And by doing these types of constrictors, people start spending less, inventories pile up, and you start seeing some problems with that, right? So this is what is happening with the economy, with the added inflation that is set to go up even more with the CPI data that we just recently uh, got in, which was very hot. 
with the gas prices that are increasing that I'm sure you guys all know and are aware of. In fact, uh, the CPI data did not log in those increases. In fact, we're going to be seeing uh, high CPI data for quite some time. And uh, the Federal Reserve is stuck between a rock and a hard place because uh, this, can this can totally turn in south. But uh, I'm uh, there's a lot of problems that are happening with the decisions that we're making as a country. In fact, uh, we beat Fox News um, to uh, posting a video where Senator John McCain, Lindsey Graham went to Ukraine in 2016, 2017, talking about how they're going to win, they're going to arm them, and all these other things. And that's just not smart. That's bad politics. That's bad foreign policy. Um, so essentially what's happening right now, Putin is pushing in and today we had a huge development. Uh, the president of Ukraine said that he's cooled off, literally his words, cooled off from wanting NATO to expand uh, into Ukraine. And that will start to open negotiations for Putin and um, Ukraine to cease this war for once and for all. Uh, Russian news outlets have disbarred independent journalists and essentially what's happening is that they're doing a pro-russian uh type of uh propaganda which is no different than what we do here in the united states unfortunately right i call it how it is this is why you know why you guys come here i don't you know i keep it i give it to you straight um and china is actually supporting uh, Russians propaganda by essentially promoting a journalist to uh, take on this uh, oh Russia is just doing a military operation when you know Russia is clearly bombing children's hospitals and doing a lot of um, bad things right so the inventory information you can find in certain economic indicators I will provide them and but most importantly you can find it within the quarterly earnings report uh in companies when they report so as someone who's an investor i look at a lot of other companies you have to i don't tr i trust them over um unfortunately our government numbers because they it's all it's all you know it's uh you know it's the cpi is like honestly just a joke to me it does not measure true economic activity so you got to actually look at nordstrom and see for yourself inventory rising look at peloton see the inventory rising I'm reading the comments here, so if I pause here. Yeah, and it's definitely it's 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 definitely a terrible look. And the 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 issue that we have right now is that Russia is it Russia's economy. So, so we can understand the pros and cons. Absolutely. When I when, when I get back into Arizona, I'm going to be looking at all of the Clover Assistant doctors, and if I have to pay them to get on here, I definitely will. Uh, so, I, but I will flex my medical student badge, right, uh, to see if maybe they can help a you know medical student uh, uh, to provide this information. I'm sure they will. If not, we'll uh, we'll provide them the money uh, to be able to uh, help out the Clover Health community. Uh, but, um, hell yeah, no, that's good, Jake. Hell, hell yeah, that's exactly, uh, you know, a lot of people are in that group right now. And look at my other videos. I talk about how a lot of institutional ownerships are coming in and, and, and hitting, um, So exactly. So the, the, again, it's 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 West. It's the West versus um, it's 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 the West versus uh, um, essentially Russia, Iran, honestly Venezuela too. So another thing I don't also agree with the United States approach is that we're not drill. We're there. It's a lie. They're not actually giving out the licenses. Um, the Biden. They're playing a game. They're, they they do not want oil to drill. It's very, it's very clear, right? They're playing a game. They would rather go to Venezuela, who's buddies, buddies with Russia and, and Iran, and they'd rather go to Iran to get their oil than rather do it at home. I don't know why. 
another thing I don't really like about China is that they donated only seven hundred and fifty thousand, seven hundred, let's call it eight hundred thousand dollars to Ukraine. And they are what the second largest GDP in the world. Can you please forgive me if I missed that up? That is just wrong. United States, that's why we're a beacon of hope. We give how much? We give billions of dollars. And our, you know, so and their economy is not too far from us. What they have what, 16 trillion, we have 22. So these are they and and, and that's the thing. I, I always, unfortunately, the Keystone Pipeline has been so politicized. I honestly think I agree. Uh so yeah, I, I agree. Americans are being squeezed right now and they're getting hurt, they're getting hit hard. Um but I, I wanted to move back to Kathy, but I also wanted to show you guys uh, uh, something else that's uh, important as well to just give you guys an understanding of how these things play out. So if you guys don't know, this is my Twitter page. Um, it's uh, uh, Twitter handle Al Stock Trades. Uh, here I'm here, you know, it's there. Uh, I want to show you guys this video. There it is. So let's just play this one really quickly so you guys understand. This was in 1997, talking about Russia. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit this really quickly, and then we'll go back to Kathy here. Again, sorry for this, all these delays. Things will be so much smoother in the future, I promise. Okay, let me know if you guys hear this. Let's play this. One of those leaders. Let's play this, okay? Tell me if you hear this. Our conversations have gone off, which is repeated with Levitt. They talked about they don't want this NATO expansion. They know it's not in their security interest and on and on. So this is in 1997, Biden talking about NATO expansion. And this is Russia saying essentially that we're going to not go to you if you keep doing this. So let's just go over. Our conversations hmm. have gone off, which was repeated with Levitt. They talked about they don't want this NATO expansion. They know it's not in their security interest and on and on and said, well, and if you do that, we may have to look to China. And I couldn't help using the colloquial expression from my state by saying, to have gone off lots of luck in your senior year. Um, you know, uh, good luck. And if, not, if that doesn't work, try Iran. Um, and uh, I'm serious. I said that to them, and these were, very, and 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 they know. I knew. They knew. Everybody knows that that is not an option. And everybody knows. Every one of those leaders acknowledges and needs, and they resent it. But they need. They need to look west. And the question is, whether this is designed to completely shut them out, but not in terms. Of our conversation was a gun. So essentially, guys. Uh Let's go ahead and remove this here. So what you guys just heard right now is, I, I, don't, I don't have to explain it. This issue has been going on for quite some time. This is 1997, and they are turning to China. The U.S. never believed that. They are. And this is a, you know, so now let's go back to Kathy Woods. Somehow, if this, I don't know how, we're going to be able to reintegrate Russia back into the economy. If someone can explain to me how, it's going to make me, you know, a little more bullish on the, you know, what's going on here. But how do you unfreeze assets? And I mean, there's a lot of damage and trust that's happened now between Russia and U.S. I mean, I don't even know how the hell you're, you're going to fix this issue here. But once this fit, once this issue does fix, and Russia has to just kind of swallow their pride. Uh, there, you know, the economy is going to rebound like, like, like we've never seen. Once all of the interest rates spikes happen and interest rates goes down, Kathy Woods, what she's saying is, I agree, will come true. Stocks are going to rebound like crazy and you're going to see an inflow of cash in growth stocks and all the stocks that were like, for example, Clover Health is not trading at a high revenue multiple. We're trading below the uh, um, it did increase recently, but we're trading below the actual market cap. Uh, uh, the market cap of the company is trading below the actual annual revenue. So, I mean, that's just silly, right? And again, I don't know if you've recently tuned in with the with the Tesla. But 
uh, in the beginning, we talked about how Tesla, AMD, all these things, the, the stock story of free cash flow and net income always happens again and again and again. And that's why we made this channel to, to, to show you guys these patterns. Because uh, once you understand them all, everything just repeats. Um, so let me go ahead and let's go back to Miss Kathy. And we may just have to do the first half of the video. And we'll do the other half later. Let's see here. All right, let's play. Are, are, uh, there is conflicting evidence, but um, they're paying attention to other variables that support their point of view. Um, well, uh, I'm going to go through now uh, the policy, economic indicators, and so forth, and we'll build build a case here that um, just like uh, during COVID, uh, innovation is going to solve the problems associated with supply disruptions. Here we go again, supply chain problems, uh, this time out of Russia and Ukraine with energy and food, uh, some, some of the areas most disrupted. So uh, these are necessities. So this is getting very serious. And uh, we believe these are serious taxes on, on the consumer, especially lower income consumers, and explain why consumer sentiment has fallen apart uh, broadly. So let's go through that right now, and uh, we will wind up saying that uh, because of what's going on right now, uh, innovation is going to get... If it's too fast, please tell me to slow it down. I have it at 1.5. Another booster shot. COVID certainly accelerated many trends, and we think uh, the higher costs associated with supply chain issues, uh, and, and, and now even more so with uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia... Uh, that we, companies and consumers are going to turn to innovation and that whatever our growth expectations for our companies uh, uh, were with, within the last year, they have just accelerated again, given this uh, new crisis. Uh, so now let's turn to uh, monetary policy. Uh, this week, uh, Chairman Powell said, uh, in all likelihood, the Fed would raise interest rates. He also did say when asked the question um, in his testimony um, that uh, he would get aggressive if, if inflation seemed to be embedding into the system uh, in, in a 70s-like uh, scenario. Well, uh, we thought about the analogy to the 70s, and, and we know a lot of, uh, especially old-time investors who were around during the 70s, are, are um, forecasting just that, in inflation embedded in the system at a much higher than expected rate. We are not expecting that. Why? Um, it comes back to this concept of velocity the rate at which money turns over. So I did a little more homework on velocity in the 70s. Um, actually, the increase in velocity um, started in the 60s. Uh, and uh, in the fourth quarter of, from the fourth quarter of 64 to the first quarter of 81, uh, velocity increased 21%. Uh, so the rate at which money turns over. So this is, this is actually incorrect. The velocity of money did not increase by 21%. Uh, again, I'm being a stickler here. I'm, I'm being a stickler, but, but again, if you're, if, if you're, you know, if you're managing people's money, Kathy, you gotta, you know, I, I expect you to be at a 0.25% plus or minus error, not a five, 6%, but the concept still remains. But for her to just say that it's, it's just, uh, again, I'm looking at it from the perspective that she sold Palantir, you know, there's a lot of data points that she's given me, right? So this is what she's talking about the money supply back in Q4 of 1964 and all the way up to Q1 of 1981, the money supply, the, the, the velocity of money has increased, but it did not increase by 21%, increased by 16.7, but 16, about approximate 16%. Again, not a big deal, but again, I watch everyone like a hawk and I analyze, you know, again, I'm a data, I, I take in data, I look at all the fragmentations, all the BS, and I, de and I, and I just take it out, right? And, and, and imagine all the other mistakes that she, 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 she's done. Again, no one's perfect, right? But I agree what she's saying. Velocity of money has increased and then it went down and then, and obviously it peaked up so high here. The nineties were such a great time. And then since then it's just basically been going down and right now we just have to see where things are going to be at. So let's just go, uh, let's uh, bring it back to her. Let's, uh, Uh, 
turns over in the economy. And uh, what that meant at that time, at least, is many people used to buy, uh, as soon as they um, got more income, they would buy goods and services, and especially goods, um, right away, as quickly as possible, because they were afraid prices would go up or uh, interest rates, in the case of cars and other durable goods, would go up. So buy now before prices and interest rates go up. Uh, and uh, that became I agree. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, if you look at what has happened since 1997, and I was actually surprised to see, to see uh, the peak in velocity uh, this time around that long ago, uh, from the third quarter of 97 to uh, the fourth quarter of uh, 2020, uh, 2021, um, velocity has dropped 50%. Now, what we've seen is a couple of things. We saw two crises, tech and telecom bust, 08, 09 financial meltdown, a lot of fear, and uh, inflation and interest rates continuing to trend down. Uh, and so this thought that we'd have to run out before interest rates and prices went up, uh, we didn't have to worry about that much anymore. Uh, some people are worrying about it today, to be sure. But even so, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, velocity has been flat. It has not gone up. And consumer sentiment would suggest uh, that it, the next leg in velocity will be down. On top of that, money growth rates have decelerated from the high uh, at 27% in 2020 uh, to 12.6. Uh, that's the January reading. But if you look at money growth on an annualized basis, it is slowing down. It has slowed down in the last three months to the low single digit range. So uh, already we think there's a dramatic deceleration in money growth underway that many people uh, are not focusing on. Fiscal policy. Uh, we're in gridlock. We're in a midterm election year, uh, but we, we know that we are also on the other side of the stimulus payments associated specifically with uh, the, the coronavirus crisis. As a result, federal outlays are falling on a year over year basis. That is also um, a, a, a break on the economy. Um, on to economic statistics. Uh, today was Employment Friday. That's why I'm, uh, I'm doing this today. And uh, the report was very strong, very, very strong. And uh, in fact, we had non-farm payrolls up uh, 678,000. Expectation was 481,000. And the household employment survey was also strong at over uh, 500,000 as well. One of the things uh, that we, we are wondering about now is seasonal factors. Um, because of COVID, um, we've had a shift in seasonal factors. Uh, we had Omicron uh, hit uh, late last year. And so we don't know uh, if the seasonal factors have uh, are exaggerating what's going on right now or not. We also do believe that given the labor shortages that have been widely reported uh, around the, this country, but in other countries as well, uh, we wonder if uh, companies, once people uh, do apply for jobs, are saying, okay, finally, I better hire this person, even though my business is slowing down a bit. Uh, I don't think it's going to contract and I really uh, need to fill this position. Some of that could be going on. So the unemployment rate is now 3.8%, which is near the low point uh, pre-COVID. So, so that's very good. Um, the work week went up a bit, which is always good. That's actually turbocharges those employment statistics. But uh, the previous month was revised down a bit. So uh, about even there. Labor force participation rate went up. Um, that's been a big question. Will labor supply start picking up now that uh, the COVID coronavirus is um, has, has passed, hopefully? Um, and uh, that, that will alleviate wave, wage pressures, of course. Now, the shocker in the report was wages, but not on the high side of expectations, which is what everyone was expecting uh, and what, which has been happening. Um, maybe the supply increases are already at work because the average hourly earnings index was flat. Uh, now, on a year-over-year -year basis, it's uh, up 5.1%. Uh, so that was very interesting and, and probably my biggest takeaway in, in the report. One of the things that we believe is that this employment report is old news, uh, and employment actually is a lagging indicator. Uh, it, it contains a lot of information about what's going on in the what has gone on in the economy. But uh, one of the metrics we uh, keep our eye on is uh, energy uh, consumption as a share of GDP. Uh, and uh, uh, that is reaching a high that we have not seen since 08, 09. Um, and and every time it has reached that level, it's again this, this question of purchasing power um, and uh, consumer sentiment. Every time it has reached that le level, we, uh, we have gone into recession. I noticed today the White House is proposing a ban on Russian imports. Um, I think that Russian imports uh, account for roughly 3% of our energy imports. So that's not devastating, uh, and, uh, but it will, it will cause... A and she's absolutely correct. So there's a graph I can show you guys uh, later on our videos. And I'll also put it in our exclusive daily briefings to all the people that are in our private Discord channel that are watching right now. It's true. Whenever we energy levels spike, we tend to uh, skim or go deep down into a recession. And essentially these issues, um, uh, these, are, the, these, these are high probabilistic issues. And it makes sense. Um, Americans are hurting right now. Uh, there are crimes that are being happened and committed in Arizona where people are actually starting to go in people's cars and steal gas. They're starting to poke the 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 um the gas uh, storage compartments in vehicles and 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 take and siphon off gas. I mean that's literally how bad it's going to get and if it keeps growing up if if gas becomes like this then uh, 
Uh, I can only imagine. Uh, so that's something to pay attention to. Again more problems and it is why uh, one of the reasons prices are going up consumer sentiment continues to plummet uh, and uh, we look at um, uh, you know the the uh, indicator or the index within the the university of michigan consumer sentiment index good time to buy a car uh, that's one of the most cyclical um, uh, sectors out there and uh, it continues to fall now uh, in january auto sales did pick up uh, they they picked up from uh, roughly 12.4, I think it was, to 15. And uh, we think that was a gusher associated with uh, the auto companies finally getting chips to put in the cars that were waiting for the customers. Uh, we, we got another report this week. Auto sales were down again, uh, so from 15 to 14.07. To um, so we don't think that uh, hopes of uh, the auto uh, sector moving back into a V-shaped recovery are going to play out at all. Um, we also know, as I mentioned before, that real retail sales and real consumption, if you average out the fluctuations over the last three months, look pretty flat, if not slightly down. Meanwhile, inventories are picking up pretty at a pretty rapid rate. Inventory to sales ratios, many people point out, are very low. But if consumption stops, uh, inventories can build very quickly. And uh, then our supply chain problems will go away. Not the best way for that uh, to happen, but it, but it is true. Uh, housing still still remains strong. Again, a lot in the pipeline. A lot of people have been waiting for that house. So it could be a little bit of a lagging indicator. Uh, capital spending is strong. Uh, we think that's a necessity as the, 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 the globe digitizes uh, much faster than might otherwise have been the case. Um, I mentioned government outlays down. That's a break on the economy. And in terms of trade, we have no idea what's uh, going to go on. I think uh, we'll import or we, our imports will continue to grow very strongly uh, because the orders were placed a while ago. And I think that will become part of the inventory problem. Um, the one good news on inflation, and we don't have much, uh, the commodity complex is on fire. Um, but one good news is a piece of good news is the productivity numbers we got uh, in the last few weeks were very, very strong. Now, it's been very volatile recently, but uh, at least for, for the last quarter, uh, productivity growth up 6.6%. And that took unit labor costs uh, down to only a 0.9% increase. Uh, so uh, compensation, yes, rising very rapidly. Productivity rising very rapidly. And productivity and I want to just briefly go in and mention two things. So back in November, correct me if I'm wrong, I posted a video about ExxonMobil. I told uh, my subscribers, I said, listen, I, and also people in our Mastering Stock Market course and now Stock Alerts, at the time it was just Mastering Stock Market course, I said, ExxonMobil's price target is $80 and it could go up to 90 And would you look at that? People doubled their money, right? So Again, this is where the commodities is right now. Just Monday, just recently, Sunday night, uh, 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 oil crude, crude oil hit one hundred and thirty dollars. Right, so it's just, uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, and it could go even, it could go even higher if uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine don't don't talk. Now she's talking about productivity. Another thing I want to talk about Palantir, which is something that most people don't talk about. Right, so. When you think of automation, you think of, like for example, in our mastering, uh, uh, um, uh, in our uh, private Discord channel, what, what I have is I have a lot of robots. I have, and 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 one of them I crafted within my own hands. I downloaded my brain in, in this robot. It's called Brain Machine, and this whole thing is functioning on a. Uh, is when you you guys get an email from me, it's all automated, right? So that replaces. A secretary for me. I don't have to get a secretary to be able to manage all of the nuances so I can focus on what matters. See, that's the problem with automation. It's going to cut a lot of jobs out. With Palantir, as of right now, it doesn't do that. It basically fuses in. It melds in and fuses just like the new Mac Studio, the new M1 Ultra chip where it fuses both of the M1s together. And sorry, I'm like a big nerd. But that's what Palantir is doing. It's literally making someone who has no college education, literally no education at all, and it's turning them into a software engineer, a PhD. That's what Palantir is doing. That's what Palantir is taking someone with no software engineering skills, nothing, and making them into a PhD in software engineering. So it's increasing productivity, and that's what she's hitting at, but she's not communicating it as well, right? Look at Clover Health. Look at the productivity, right? That is exactly why data is becoming the new norm. Data is gold. If you can take data, parcel it, analyze it, you run the world, okay? It's very simple. Your productivity increases, okay? So let's go on here.
productivity, I, I have to say, or I have to uh, emphasize, is um, very much a, a function of innovation taking place. So that's consistent with um, what we think is going on, that innovation is accelerating. Now, onto the markets. Um, I'll, I'll give you the, the top and uh, bottom sectors, at least for the S&P 500, over, well, year to date. And uh, no surprise, uh, given what has happened to the energy price, uh, energy is the only sector that's up. It's up 33%. And uh, consumer staples and utilities are the uh, fill out the top three. They're down just uh, just a bit. Uh, so that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting combination. Energy, um, we know what, what's going on there. Staples is a very defensive sector. That says that investors are are becoming somewhat concerned about the economy. And utilities are interest rate sensitive. So when interest rates go down, uh, utilities uh, dividend yields look better and better. So they tend to outperform. Now in a rising in inflation environment, uh, uh, interest rates are not supposed to come down. And at the short end of the curve, they are not coming down. But at the long end, they are. And we'll we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, the worst performance sectors uh, are associated with the consumer. Again, um, I think the loss of purchasing power is a big problem for the consumer. So consumer discretionary, consumer services, and technology, which um, despite innovation getting a booster shot uh, from problems, as innovation solves problems, uh, it is a high beta sector. And so, so many investors just shy away from it uh, when trouble seems to be on the horizon. <clears throat> uh, as far as the bond market, uh, the long treasury yield, uh, long treasury bond yield, uh, peaked in mid February at two point. Thank you so much for your support. Down to one seventy three. Now, what's been very interesting is the yield curve, which peaked in uh, March of last year at I think roughly one hundred and sixty basis points. So the difference between long term interest rates and short term interest rates, one hundred and sixty basis points, uh, and that was um, th that was a reflection of uh, easy monetary policy, uh, short rates being much lower than, than long rates. Now that, now that the fear is that the Fed is going to increase a number of times, uh, we're seeing short-term interest rates uh, up a lot, uh, certainly um, in the context of recent history, uh, but long rates not going up as much. And so the yield curve has compressed to 25 basis points. Now, uh, we're, we're getting close to an inverted yield curve, meaning, meaning long rates uh, below short rates. And that is often a sign that the Fed is too tight and uh, real growth is going to disappoint and inflation uh, is going to be lower than expected. Uh, we think that is the case. And, uh, and that, was, um, th that was a reflection of uh, easy monetary policy. I want you to guys, I want you to guys listen to this again. This is important. This is extremely important. Uh, short rates being much lower than, than long range. Now that, now that the fear is that the Fed is, despite so consumer discretionary, consumer services, and technology, which um, despite innovation getting a booster shot uh, from problems, as innovation solves problems, uh, it is a high beta sector. And so, so many investors just shy away from it uh, when trouble seems to be on the horizon. <clears throat> uh, as far as the bond market, uh, the long treasury yield, uh, long treasury bond yield, uh, peaked in mid-February at 2.06 and is back down to 173. Now, what's been very interesting is the yield curve, which peaked in uh, March of last year at, I think, roughly 160 basis points. So the difference between long-term interest rates and short-term interest rates, 160 basis points. Uh, and that was, um, th that was a reflection of uh, easy monetary policy, uh, short rates being much lower than, than long range. Now that, now that the fear is that the Fed is going to increase a number of times, uh, we're seeing short-term interest rates uh, up a lot, uh, certainly um, in the context of recent history, uh, but long rates not going up as much. And so the yield... So when long rates don't go up as much and when the short term rates go up higher, it signifies an, in, an, in, it signifies an inverted yield curve. Ladies and gentlemen, back in 2019, we had an inverted yield curve. And at that point, I was watching the economy like a hawk. I said, there's a recession inbound. Uh, not to say the pandemic was the reason. It wasn't that, but it just so happened to just do, do that. But yet again, we're because again the reason why there was an inverted yield curve was because back in 2018 um the the, the federal reserve started to uh be you know tighten their money their, their monetary policy they're doing that now so when you have an inverted yield curve what that signifies is that the growth of the economy is going to start slowing down interest rates are going to be rising right and by doing that people are not going to buy homes they're going to say you know what this is too expensive for me because people are going to look at interest rates people are going to look at cars and they're going to say you know what interest rates on a car is too damn expensive ah uh, you know what i'm just going to hang on to this you know, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen right now. People are going to start collecting debt. Their credit scores are going to start decreasing. And all those balance transfers that they're swapping back and forth is not going to be doing well. And all that's what that's going to do is it's just going to slow down the economy. You're going to get a decrease in the M2 money supply with the velocity. All of these things play into effect with a slow bounding economy. And 
then once all that hits, a recession hits, like I told you, in the beginning of the year, I told you this could go four ways. We could undergo tremendous growth, bull market, recession, or stagflation. I said recession's better, and then we can jump back to where we used to be, right? So anywho, that's kind of the quick little sum, sum game right now to explain to you what is an inverted yield curve, right? It's when the two years higher than the 10-year, okay? Yield curve has compressed to 25 basis points. Now, uh, we're, we're getting close to an inverted yield curve, meaning, meaning long rates uh, below short rates. And that is often a sign that the Fed is too tight and uh, real growth is going to disappoint and inflation uh, is going to be lower than expected. Uh, we think that is the case, and we thought so for some time. Uh, high yield spreads, so the difference between uh, high yield bonds, uh, interest rates, and uh, treasury bond yields, uh, they are moving up uh, and uh, corroborating that outlook. Now, they, they, they haven't spiked, and, uh, and it doesn't suggest duress out there yet, uh, but um, they're not much above pre-COVID levels in, in, indeed, but if they move up rapidly from here, we will be in a, a territory that uh, would suggest that some companies are finding it difficult to service their debt. In other words, their business is falling off. Uh, commodities, they're on fire. We believe this is a supply problem, much more than a demand problem. I'm sure there's a scramble to build inventories of anything now, anything in the energy complex, uh, any of the metals that uh, come out of Russia, uh, food out of the breadbasket of the Ukraine. Uh, interestingly, the commodity price increases are in the face of the dollar increasing. Uh, the dollar increasing tends to put pressure on prices, uh, but this un the supply problem and maybe inventory hoarding is overcoming that. The dollar is going up because it's a, it's a, a flight to safety currency. And uh, we're also seeing other flights to safety. So the dollar is up about two and a half percent since the end of January, when the Russia-Ukraine um, issues were becoming more obvious. Uh, and then the other two flights to safety we've seen, uh, Bitcoin, 6.1 percent, and gold, 8.3 percent. Uh, so th those are the markets. Now on to uh, innovation solves problems. Uh, our analysts have been um, providing me with a, a running list. Uh, here are some of them. <clears throat> so uh, the crypto networks are... are uh, proving their worth as a, a neutral technology platform uh, that we're seeing donations of both Bitcoin and uh, Ether to, to the Ukraine. I think it's 50 million, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the last week. Uh, and uh, we're also seeing Bitcoin as a currency hedge for Russian citizens who uh, are watching the ruble um, get, get uh, hammered here. Uh, and, you know, these are not the oligarchs. In fact, as we were discussing at our at our brainstorm today, there's not enough uh, there's not enough Bitcoin out there for the oligarchs to hedge. Uh, and they, could, they they have been hedging uh, for years. Anyway, this is for the average Russian citizen who actually is aghast, many of them, as we hear it, aghast at what's going on in, in Russia. Uh, Tesla is providing free supercharging uh, in Poland. Uh, Poland's taking in, of course, a lot of refugees. Uh, and of course, we know that longer term, uh, electric vehicles are going to help um, with the demand destruction of oil. Uh, I think the prices alone will destroy a, a lot of uh, demand for oil and accelerate the shift to uh, electric vehicles. And especially, uh, we believe robo taxis will be electric and they'll be on the road 50 to 60% of the day. So that acceleration away from oil um, will, will, um, will happen as we move into, into the autonomous realm. We're seeing a, a, a lot of talk about renewable uh, renewables, especially nuclear, um, to reduce uh, dependence on Russia, of course, solar and, and wind. But I think nuclear is becoming um, less of a negative, even to some environmentalists who, who have studied it a little bit more uh, carefully. Um, we're seeing uh, we're seeing, of course, the social platforms providing real real time updates and providing, you know, a, a glimpse into the horrors that are taking place there. And I think that has put a lot of pressure on um, financial institutions and others uh, to boycott uh, or stop doing business with Russia. It's terrible for Ru the, the Russian citizens who do not want this invasion. Uh, but uh, I think we've never seen uh, the financial system used as such a weapon. Uh, and uh, we'll see we'll see if it works. Um, we also know uh, uh, about Starlink, uh, uh, I think. Um, the president of so she says something interesting here and this is true what we're experiencing right now is a weapon like no other we are actually in war with russia but not the traditional sense of war of bloodshed we're in an economic war something that we really haven't really seen before this is a tremendous war and we've essentially are going to send them back to the stone ages i mean we're you know our technology in the west and the european you know, union. we have the best tech. I mean, Apple, I mean, it is the most profound, best company. McDonald's is leaving. I'm not saying that's, you know, sign of innovation, but I mean, we got some heavy hitters, right? Um, yes, nuclear. Finally, people are getting, uh, 
Exactly. And nuclear is going, I think we're finally going into nuclear and the bad dilemma or the stereotype surrounding nuclear is slowly fading away. Now, uh, Mr. Scruff, McCruff, I believe, right? Uh, so I um, want to answer this question really quickly here. Um, so essentially what's happening is that, yes, they have gone off kilter and the, 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 the problem is usually prices, they don't tend to drop. Maybe if the, let's say, um, the market becomes the, 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 if the market, the market determines, right? It's the consumers that determine. The problem is with the wage increases and housing gone up, we're starting to live in a, in a, in a society that um, Bernie Sanders honestly predicted, uh, and a lot of sociologists predicted as well. We are living in the era of the haves and have-nots of society. If you are on this channel, then most likely you are really blessed. And if not, then you are trying to change your life, which is why we've created Al Stock Alerts at $9.99 to help everyone. Because if you don't, if you, let me just be clear, if you don't invest, and if you don't have your money working for you, it, it's, it's, you're, unfortunately, the probability of being poor is going to be significantly higher. And this is the sad reality that we live in now. The old days where, you know, you can just go and be a milk delivery man and just be able to support a whole family and buy a home, those days are over. We're living in a society where if you don't have money, if you, if you, if you don't, if you're not investing, you're losing money. That's exactly what's happening right now. And, 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 and someone who's going in the healthcare field, uh, th this hurts, right? So I believe that prices may not even drop. Just recently, Tesla announced that they're going to be increasing their Model Y cost by $1,000. We're starting to see price increases, okay? All right. So let me just make sure I read all the comments here. Oh, yep. I already saw that. All right. So let's go ahead. President of Ukraine uh, reached out to Elon Musk and say, hey, we're being cut off out uh, out there. And of course, Elon sent uh, Starlink to the rescue. Uh, so uh, that that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal that uh, we can continue to uh, communicate with these people. And again, everyone around the world can see the horror uh, that uh, that Ukraine is experiencing. So. Uh, those are those are a few. I mean, there are many other on the medical front. Uh, there's a, a company called Butterfly, uh, which has sent hundreds, if not thousands, of point of care ultrasounds for medical triage and emergency uh, response. And uh, there's a company called 908 Devices, which is the o only mobile mass spec uh, machine broadly uh, that that enables uh, in the field detection of hazards, bioweapons, pollutants, uh, and uh, contaminants. So uh, a lot of our companies are uh, are doing what they can uh, to to help the cause. Um, while the public markets don't appreciate what's going on in the innovation world, in fact, quite the opposite, they have uh, taken a sledgehammer to, to these stocks in the last year, the private markets uh, certainly appreciate what innovation can do and will do uh, to help solve the problems that have have um, arisen from the coronavirus crisis, uh, and the supply chain problems, now uh, Russia and, and the Ukraine. Um, According to a study that um, Max Friedrich, uh, uh, our, one of our fintech analysts, uh, has done using Crunchbase, the Crunchbase database, uh, it looks like while uh, innovation stocks in the public markets have, have dropped, certainly pure play innovation, those that are not in the indexes, those in the indexes are, uh, uh, the, the innovation stocks in the indexes tend to be a little more old world. We even see from, from meta platforms, uh, formerly Facebook, that the once disruptor is being disrupted. Uh, but uh, if you look at the non-benchmark uh, innovation, uh, stocks, uh, you'll see that they're down 60, 70 percent. So it's a replay of the COVID crisis. And uh, as we said back then, innovation solves problems. Uh, and I'll say it again because it is true. What we're seeing the private world uh, do is actually um, uh, move into up rounds. Over the last 20 years, the uh, 20 years, the last year, uh, the average up round has been 20 percent. So down 60 percent in the public markets, up 20 percent in the uh, in the private markets. And uh, we think the private markets have have uh, gotten the plot and uh, corroborate our point of view. And truth will win out, just like uh, uh, this idea that innovation solves problems was a winning strategy coming out of the coronavirus. We believe it will be ever more so as our five platforms, uh, DNA sequencing, adaptive robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology all scale exponentially uh, during the next five to 10 years. 
Uh, and we're seeing evidence that these superior growth rates will power through any recession uh, and that innovation, uh, innovation oriented stocks are going to, and from a relative point of view, look much, much better from a relative growth point of view uh, than, any, than anything you'll find, certainly in the value space, but even in the more traditional growth space. So with that, um, I guess I'll close saying that our hearts are heavy for the Ukraine. Our prayers are with uh, the people of the Ukraine and for the people in Russia who want nothing to do with this. And, um, and uh, I will then come back to you next, uh, next month and uh, hopefully we will see a lot of re resolutions. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and let me remove this here and let me share another screen here for you guys. The same one here, but this is going to be, uh, I can move it around. All right. So, uh, so someone uh, asks, I see a price target for Clover. Is that for a long term? Exactly. So let me just uh, ex explain to you where I got this price target from. So uh, I've been doing this for 10 years. This is my, our own proprietary intrinsic value calculation, which goes 10 years into the future, discounts back at a 10, 15% discount rate. This is our, in our uh, course, Mastering Stock Market course at allstocktrades.com. So there's a video that I uh, I recommend, um, Dan Man, if you haven't seen the video, there's a video I created that says intrinsic value calculation uh, with Warren Buffett's face. I recommend you watch that video because it shows you how I got that stock uh, a price and essentially by putting in the numbers from Clover Health. Yes, it is long term and I explain way more in depth, but I will go over it right now really quickly. So. For people that don't know, this is our uh, Al Stock Alerts. This one is not from the Mastering Stock Market Course. The Mastering Stock Market Course is this uh, silver line here. This is the Al Stock Alerts for $9.99 every month. This is what it includes. We have the FANGs, Bitcoin. But what is happening here, well, the question he's asking is the price targets. So I have over close to 100 companies analyzed. We've been hitting uh, uh, price targets like D-Dog has been hitting, ExxonMobil is hitting our bull case. We've been seeing a lot of success. Um, JWN, 30, 30, increased 38%. But going back to his question here, um, is uh, I see the price targets for Clover Health, it, you know, is the target long-term? Yes. So this is a long-term price target. I would say, uh, so just to help you read this, and you know, I recommend watching the video that I, ha I had about Clover, is if you look at the price targets here, these are the, my bull, base, and bear case situations. Projections, 24 to 2025. My price target for Clover is $48. Now, again, that's for direct. This is without direct. A lot of analysts are going to be trying to push for this price target in the future because of you know the FUD and them trying to probably exit Humana and all the other uh, um, stocks that they are heavily invested in and possibly move it over to Clover. It's just how the game of Wall Street works. But I just put both of them up here so you can understand. This stock is heavily undervalued, and we're going to see that this Tesla health, if you may, or a software defined physician for all the people that are heavily following Clover Health's Andrew, um, President Andrew Toy, former CTO. They just got a recent one. And uh, yeah, so we upgraded it here. There's other price targets for other companies, like for example, Foot Locker, Mara, and all these other, you know, price targets. I, I unfortunately I don't have time to go over this on, on YouTube videos, but you have literally my brain here. But not just that, you also have um, this uh, exclusive daily briefing, which then comes with an audio version of um, what's happening with the economy. And let me just uh, show you guys this really quickly since uh, we're here. Let me just um, show you uh, here with the audio. Good. So then... So then now you guys are going to be able to hear this. So this is what we, uh, every morning, we, we give this to our uh, members here. Uh, this is a high fidelity, artificial intelligent uh, voice that is uh, sounds almost like human. Welcome to Al Stock Alerts exclusive daily broadcast. Today is March 10th, 2022. Stock futures dip after the S&P 500's best one day rally since 2020. There's a lot of value here and there's a lot going on here and you know we try to give it that this is just one thing out of all of the things we we have there's just so much to go over but just to give you some stuff um here's our top short squeeze stocks we give this out every uh, morning these are the results the results speak for themselves um CRN ran up uh, 100 176% Indu ran up uh 1800% 19x your money 
we have results from different stocks that we've talked about. These are all the results. And it's uh, we just started this this specific platform uh, just recently. Uh, so um, we also have Al Stock Alerts Pro. You get your own private room and chat. It's locked away so no one can see what people are doing. But this is your own private room and chat. Um, and you could just put whatever commands you want. This is your this is your own space. You can do what the hell you want in there. Um, we we uh, give you guys uh, obviously heat maps. Uh, we give you guys sector rotations so you guys understand where the money is flowing, such as energy and all that. We give you senators and House of Representatives tradings. Uh, coming soon, this is my brain machine, which is my proprietary data brain, literally, in commands where you have this AI system that gives you all the information you ever need in regarding to fundamental analysis, DCF calculations, price targets, you name it, we got it. All data supplied by uh, by our stock trades, and um, this is coming soon. We also have our uh, AI artificial intelligent technology, which basically gives you everything that you need in regarding to options flow commands, such as the ten largest option trades for symbols, calls and puts and buys and sells and premium volumes, unusual flow. There's just a lot of information. We have algo flow line, which is a, prop a proprietary algo flow, which anticipates market sentiment for the, all those algo traders. Heat maps that basically tell you where the top strike is going to be. There is a lot of value in here, and you will not. I can tell. I can tell you right now. If you can find a place that sells this cheaper, I will match their price. There is nobody that's doing this, and we're doing it on purpose. Because the economy's headed into a into a rich versus poor, and if you're in the middle right now, this is your time to be able to get into that category. Unfortunately, this is the world we're living into right now. Here are all the students uh, coming in, and the, the this is them putting in the commands. This is uh, we also get an AI. It gives you support and resistance. We were able to track where Clover Health was about to explode. Um, we have the dark pool commands. It gives you inside traders dark pool where big money is going in. There's just constant so much. I can't go over all this. You guys are going to have to come in here and explore. There's a lot going on here. We also have all these different types of auto AI systems, which basically gives you a... Um, different types of uh, alerts that you could follow with a algorithmic AI confidence level of projection, especially if the AI symbol is extremely confident, it gives it to you. And we've had a lot of members essentially become very successful at this. We have insider tradings from Senate and House of Representatives, so you know exactly what stock they do. You can click this link and know how much they bought. We also have chat groups that are private that you guys can enjoy. And these are all the profits that people have essentially been experiencing. Amazing, tremendous profit. I am very proud of them. This is 300%. This is another 200%. What is it? Another. This is this is when he first started using the platform. So there's a lot going on here, guys. The data speak for itself. Um, Here's all the stuff that people are doing. So, you know, just, there's just a lot going on. It's just very difficult to go over this. There's a lot. The guy said it here. The guy, um, one person said there is a lot of information here and it is just crazy. There's just, here, here's, here's the comment. There are so many robots here. The data is like off the charts. You guys have what hedge funds have. That's my goal. And I'm going to continue providing this and I'm going to try my best to cap this at $9.99. All the people that are enrolled, don't worry. You guys are grandfathered in, but essentially this will be capped and I'm going to try my best to cap it. I want each and every person to get access to this information. It is not fair that you, that the society, retail investors don't know this information, don't have access to it, and we will bring it. And if, let's just say, for example, if Wall Street decides they won't, they're old school. But if Wall Street decides to change the economic form, the economic system, I will update and we will continue to update our brain machine to basically encompass everything you need to know about the market. Everything. Okay, so that's all we have here, folks. It was a pleasure, privilege, and honor. You guys have no idea how much you mean to me. Okay. So let's see here. 
platform backs. Ex yes, exactly. So those videos are coming. Uh, I'm in the development programming stage right now on the um, the brain machine. The other one's functioning. I do have one video. Uh, the uh, this video here, uh, which I'm probably I'm sure you saw. This video, what's inside our platform, it goes over essentially the basics of how to use it, but we will go into a crash course more in depth on how to leverage this platform for your benefit. Um, <clears throat> a bigger YouTuber could get data for $9.99 month and two. Um, well, it, it essentially a bigger YouTuber could get the data. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if other YouTubers want to get access to this, be my guest. Uh, again, it, the goal is essentially uh, the the goal is essentially to be able to help the community. And if that's the community you help, I just personally ask if you can cite our data uh, because it is copyrighted and it is our own proprietary knowledge information. Um, uh, so yes, so that that's pretty much uh, that's it. Uh, uh, um, and if if you unfortunately, if you guys want this data, like if you guys want to do what we've created, it's going to cost twenty two thousand dollars a year. It's going to increase more as we include more. Uh, this is expensive. Uh, we go directly to Opera, which is the organization that gives out options we go to data centers that essentially sell this information and it's not pretty it's very expensive it's extremely extremely expensive um so yeah so there's a lot here i'm telling you there's a lot here and you can cancel at any time if you don't like this you can cancel there is no like i'm you know this is no scam this is this is our, this, this is our mission and our mission is very it, it, it's very simple i'm going to read it to you at Al Stock Trades, we are democratizing financial information for all. We foster a culture of inclusiveness and excellence. Whether you are disabled, poor, or rich, all identities and differences are included within our family. No matter your race, ethnicity, gender, identity, expression, sex, as sexual orientation, age, religion, language, ability, socioeconomic status, educational background, geographic region, no matter where you are in the world, you are embraced, valued, and we freaking love you. My mission is to create a platform that puts God first in everything we do. Shout out to Denzel Washington. Watch his motivational video. It is the stem of this whole thing. As we fight for an equal world where the power of Wall Street is given back to the people of Main Street. I understand this is extremely undervalued. I did that on purpose. I'm not a dumbass, right? So <laughs> I did this on purpose. This can easily be sold for $100 a month. Very easy. But I'm not doing that. I'm doing this on purpose to help everyone okay and that is the legacy i'm trying to build right so other than that it is a privilege uh and yeah so that's uh pretty much summarizes kathy woods we'll go over more stuff in the future and uh please comment down uh maybe after this when you guys see the comment section how can we improve how can we better serve you uh thank you for the polling system the people that voted on where the direction of where this channel wants to go i will teach you guys uh great dividend stocks a lot of great things. A lot of great things. Ex exactly. People are paying two, three, four thousand dollars, even ten, twenty thousand for just one year, two years of information. We're not doing that here. Uh, our mastering stock market course includes lifetime which is essentially uh 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 you know that's going to be capped at 15 but that's lifetime i'm not playing this game of oh subscription uh we're just no no we're not playing the 15 two thousand dollar bs subscription where you come in in a year you drop thousands of dollars and you know that's not that's not the game we're playing i'm going to be a doctor i'm going to be living quite well and i want i again my mission is you need to help your families and increase their revenue and and hopefully the people that are poor out there you guys will be able to eat healthier you guys will have more money to make better investment decisions to eat healthier so i don't see you in the hospital with type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease hyper you know lipidemia all these issues that we see where it's too late i don't want that to happen all right that's my goal right that's my goal yeah, you're paying 125 a month. That's BS, right? We're not doing that here, right? We put God first in everything we do. Again, you know, when you put on the white coat, 
I have my white coat right here. When we put on a white coat, you take an oath to the Hippocratic Oath. You have a certain obligation and responsibility to your fellow man, woman, or them. Whatever your classification is, you're all welcomed, right, in our platform. We have an obligation, and that is not to squeeze the retail investor. We want to provide for the retail investor, okay? This is our goal, and I hope that it can go far, right? So, you know, I love each and every one of you guys. I'm sick and tired of people being poor. I'm sick of rich getting richer. I'm tired of this. And I'm making, I'm, 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 I'm doing something about it. And this is the best I can do. I'm going to be improving the setup. We just got the Mac uh, Studio, which means I'll be rolling out more videos. And we are going to perfect this. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to perfect every little anatomical sequence in this data. And it's going to be per, it's going to run so smooth. Okay. So that, that's the goal. I appreciate that, Richard. God bless each and every one of you. You guys have no idea how much you, you know, y'all mean to me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's change the world each soul at a time. All right. God bless you all.